We're joined now by the CEO of Direct Relief in the midst of what's been sort of a collaborative effort amongst many communities. And Thomas, we are really excited to talk to you today as we're in the midst of hurricane season. This one projected to be perhaps more intense than some. So what does that mean for our community? Well, I think it means to prefer uh, even more so. I think each year it seems the the threat is a, the worst year ever looming, right? Just as um, circumstances change. So we've had the, the great benefit this week in Puerto Rico of having uh, representatives, ministers of health and permanent secretaries from 15 Caribbean countries have come to Puerto Rico to talk about e what each of them is doing, learn what Puerto Rico has had to go through over the past nearly six years recovering from Maria and also guiding groups like Direct Relief that are private groups that want to help what we can do in a productive way. So it's a really uh, powerful information, but I think everyone's concerned about the obvious signals we're getting about the changing climate and the intensity, frequency, and duration of these storms. This can have such an impact on folks at their homes and in their businesses, and I know power outages are such a concern. What can folks do to prepare for that potentially happening? Yeah, we talked a lot about that, it, you know, for the obvious reasons. Increasing, we're all more re reliant and dependent upon power. I think about a third of people, either themselves or someone in their household broadly, um, rely on an electronically powered medical device. So uh, at the personal level, making sure that there's a, enough backup batteries, if you can have that. We have been focused really on the organizational, institutional health facility level, and that's become a big focal point of conversation. Direct Relief has already put several million dollars in Puerto Rico and about 45 solar projects with a backup battery so that the health facilities, uh, if they lose grid power, they can continue to function. There's 17 in Florida that uh, we're supporting financially. And I think that will continue to be an important initiative among all the Caribbean nations. They know it. Um, you can't run all these new, the new technology is amazing to diagnose and treat uh, patients, but it all requires electricity as does as do uh, proper storage of the medications that many of us rely on, whether it's insulin or something else. So I think just having power for health itself is a something that warrants focus. And it became a big topic among the ministers and health leaders this week here in Puerto Rico. Thank you so much for bringing us this information and all of the hard work you're doing to keep everybody safe.